Welcome to Cambridge Orthopaedics. My name is Jay Rowell and I'm going to be talking about femoral nailing and trying to keep it within five minutes. My top tips and tricks. First of all, I set up as per freehand femoral nailing. Therefore, there's a gown pack because it's radiolucent under the buttock and this helps me get good cross-table lateral x-rays. I go for an entry point which is medial to the tip of GT and centered on the lateral view. And I sometimes use a guide wire to correct my rotation so that I get a good AP view. The reason why I go for a tip of GT entry point is because when you end up more lateral, the bone is softer and you get a lateral eccentric reaming of the, fe of the proximal femur, leading to a more lateral position of the femoral nail and more likelihood of a various deformity. Just medial to the tip of GT is a safe area to go. It's not quite piriformis, so you're not going to affect the blood supply hypothetically. I position my C-arm to be looking down the femoral head, neck and shaft. I don't go for a flat lateral, it's looking wherever that angle may be and I'm going to look for it and find it and femoral head, neck and shaft and then I'm referencing from that C-arm where my anterior and posterior positioning of that guide wire is. Therefore my aim is to get the femoral head, neck and shaft all lining up like this on a lateral view and I know where anterior is because the anterior inferior iliac spine indicates and the ischium is because it's posterior. It's much like an iliac oblique view of the pelvis. Sometimes to get that key entry point I'll drive the proximal segment into valgus by using a chance pin or a guide wire to push it further valgus to allow me to get my entry point correct. Such as this. Similarly, to get a good entry point, especially in the obese or the larger patients, I'll just stab my guide wire in, enter to get, get it in the right position under x-ray before I make an incision, give it a few taps on a mallet so it's well anchored, and then proceed from there. Therefore, my incision is in the correct place for that femoral nail to go in. Rotational alignment is key, and there are both clinical and radiographic ways of making sure it is correct. Firstly, look at the uninjured leg. Look at the clinical rotational profile, i.e. how much internal rotation there is. Then look at the radiographic rotational profile, i.e. get an AP, a true AP of the knee, and scroll up to the hip and look how much lesser trochanter is visible, and replicate that on the injured side. Then you can go by other measures of uh, rotational alignment, such as cortical diameters, radiographic replication of the uninjured side, um, clinical replication of the normal side, so looking at if you've got the same amount of internal rotation present on the, on the injured side as you have on the uninjured side. And also lastly, you can rely on the built-in antiversion within the femoral neck of proximal femoral nailing systems. They aim for a center center position in the neck and the head, also with a true lateral of the knee and perfect circles means that you've got 15 to 20 degrees of built-in antiversion. Beware the medial blowout. The nail may bind onto it in a freehand technique. Here we've got a medial posterior medial blowout. Guide wire has gone down for the entry guide wire. This is an exchange tube, so on the nailing set there is a um, distal locking trocar and sleeve and I can put that through my tiny little percutaneous hole to help swap out the entry guide wire for the ball nose guide wire. A curve on the ball nose guide wire helps it go down the correct channel. But the nail sometimes wants to go out where the blowout is and therefore you just have to move the femur to the nail rather than try anything else and then it should cannulate nicely. Here's what I mean by a center center position in the head. You get a center of the guide wire in the head, and that, if you get a true lateral of the knee and perfect circles, will correlate to 15 to 20 degrees of antiversion depending on your nail design. It's a very useful trick when you have bilateral femoral injuries. Here's another little pointer. When you've got subtrochanteric fractures, often they do line up against the nail and you don't always have to open. I try closed reduction techniques first, but the most, the key is getting the entry point right. Often because it's flex and apex anterior, you end up with a more anterior nail entry point and therefore you've just fixed the deformity. Retrograde nailing, Blumensatz line entry point, 
get the guide wire up and you've got a bit of deformity to reduce just give the leg a little wiggle and it straightens up around the nail. I use blocking screws on occasions and I use blocking screws when I'm trying to address the working length of my construct and to accommodate for uh, bone deficits. Therefore here we've got a posterior and a medial bone deficit which would lead to a varus and apex posterior deformity. I'm using these blocking wires as a template guide. I've then replaced them with screws and as the nail pass it corrects the deformity and I've got an even working length between the isthmus and the blocking screws. As you can see here. Beware the ips lateral neck fracture. If, I'm, if I've got a neck fracture and a shaft fracture, I treat them as two injuries and two separate devices. I pass a cannulated screw up first and a DHS guide wire in the correct position. And this gives me a marker as to the length of the nail that I have. Retrograde nail can then go up. I avoid locking the plate to the nail because I want to treat them as two separate injuries where one doesn't interfere with the other. And I apply maximal compression to the construct approximately. Um, via compression bolt and the cannulate screw working synergistically. You need an algorithm for retrograde nailing, an algorithm in the high energy context where you're not going to miss the neck fracture. CT scans can still miss a neck fracture. So whatever you do, make sure you look for it. So in summary, we talked about setup, entry point, rotational alignment, special scenarios, um, and there'll be further on this to come. Thank you very much.